Thank you, and thanks for having me. So, some questions. How many of us this week have travelled on Metrolink? Been to the supermarket? Withdrawn cash from an ATM? Taken a book from the library? Bought something from Amazon? Looked at pictures on Facebook? So all these things have one thing in common. That's data. And of course data is nothing without software. So, what I'd like to talk to you about in the next 15 minutes is our computational future. What that means, what that implies, and what I think we should be doing about it. So, I think it would be remiss of me not to put myself in context. Um, by day, as already said, um, I'm an enterprise architect, I'm a, a programmer in the enterprise space, in the SAP space. SAP is a one of the world's largest software companies that their software is used in businesses all around the world to run their back office, their front office. Everything that companies do that use SAP software touches our lives. Uh, I'm an SAP mentor, which basically means I'm a group of, uh, a small group of rowdy, a rowdy council for SAP that uh, have a two-way conversation between um, the real world, the customers and the partners and, and SAP themselves, which is great. And, yeah, I'm a, I'm a consultant for a small but perfectly formed organisation down south. I'm born in Oldham. I live back here in Manchester. I'm very proud to, to do so. By day, that's what I do. By night, as it were, um, I get involved in all sorts of different things, which I want to talk to you about a little bit later on. So, what I want to cover is three things. Situation. Our future is data-driven. The remedy. Teaching kids to code is important. And next steps, you can get involved. So, our future is data-driven. What does that mean? I think we've all seen from the backdrop that data is everywhere. In fact, Adrian, thank you very much for that uh, fantastic slide with, with the Tesco till. What happens in the background, as well as working out, as well as the software program working out how long to wait before saying, oi, let the next person on, the data that's gathered by us using our credit cards and our Tesco club points and the equivalent everywhere else, that is hugely valuable data. Data runs our society. All the transactions, our everyday lives, are governed by, enriched by, controlled by data. Our activities generate data. Data is incredibly important. Adrian also touched on open data. The openness of that data is paramount and even more important than the data itself to some degree. But what does data actually do? It does nothing. It just sits there. It sits there until somebody does something with that data. What, who are these people that do things with data? They're programmers. They're code writers. They're coders. They're hackers, in the proper sense of the word hacker. Not the media sense, but the true sense of building neat solutions in software, hardware, or wetware, talking about DOI bio, to hard problems. So let's look at some figures. I mentioned SAP. Companies who run their businesses on SAP software have databases storing information, that's transactions, master data, purchase orders, sales orders, customers, other business partners, plant maintenance information, information about human resources, finance, accounting, everything. Their databases run from gigabytes to petabytes. I'm a coder, I'm a programmer, but I had to look up what a petabyte was. That's a lot of zeros. That's a lot of data, a lot of business data. Moving from business to social, 400 million tweets per day on Twitter. 
I have no idea what the equivalent is on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not in that walled garden. That's another subject. That's a lot of sentiment. In fact, I saw in the newspaper this morning, or on an online newspaper this morning, uh, some stats about the Great British Bake Off and audience participation and engagement. And then analysed, done sentiment analysis on the tweets. Just like we used to do kettle analysis during Coronation Street. We could work out when the brakes were because the electricity demand went like this. Sentiment analysis, data, software. Government. Over 14,000 data sets from the UK government alone that are open for us, for the public, to use. That's a lot of data. Data on hospitals, schools, government, spend, council, libraries. So today, and our future, is data driven. The remedy. Teaching kids the code is important. So, reading, writing, arithmetic, three R's have been the essential mainstay of education. Giving our kids the, the ability to, be, to learn to be literate in maths, in reading and writing, that's essential, and that will remain essential. But there's a, a new literacy that I feel is important enough to talk about. And that's data literacy. That's literacy in coding. How many of us learnt English at school? How many of us are poets or novelists now? Thank you. But not many. We shouldn't be teaching our kids to code for them all to eventually become programmers. We should be teaching our kids to code so that they become literate. They can understand, at least, have a fighting chance to understand what's going on in the transactions about their everyday lives, to understand and be able to be conversant with and comfortable with data. We're in Greater Manchester. I was born here, born in Oldham. I live in Failsworth. Came back to my roots after working as an IT consultant everywhere. We should be proud of, you know, ourselves. The home of industry. The home of computing. Alan Turing is based here. The father of computing. The first computer, the first programmable computer, here. One of the problems, though, is that kids these, kids these days, kids these days are drowning in technology. They're drowning in iPads, smartphones, laptops, Xboxes, the works. But they're drowning because not because of the abundance, but because of the fact that they're very good users of these devices. Give an iPad to my nephew. He, he teaches me things. But do we want to build a nation of users? Do we want to become the service industry island par excellence? Do we want to continue to teach our kids or have our kids learn this? At the moment, and the government is doing things about this, but at the moment, this is the pinnacle of <coughs> IT targets. I don't want that. So computational thinking is a term that I first came across from a hero of mine, John Udell, a Byte magazine writer, 
of you all. And essentially the idea of computational thinking is about rigor, about creativeness, about expressiveness, about logical thinking, about precision, about analytical thought. And all this stuff, that's what we as programmers utilize every day. That's what we as data analysts utilize every day. Computational thinking is, in my opinion, an essential fourth R to the reading, writing, and arithmetic. So, it's important to teach our kids to code. Next steps. Like me, you can get involved. So, there's a number of initiatives, some nationwide, some worldwide, some Manchester specific, that I want to tell you about. The first of which is Code Club. I'm looking at a, a friend of mine here, Terry, whose uh, son was a member of the Code Club I run at Woodhouse's school. So Code Club was formed by two young ladies in London about a year and a half ago now, so still very new. And their aim by 2015 is to have a code club in every primary school, sorry, not in every primary school, in 25% of primary schools by 2015. Primary schools, 9 to 11 year olds. After school programming club, go in there. It's all about finding schools who are forward thinking enough to want to have this for their kids. Finding people like me and people like you who are programmers by day and want to share that knowledge and also finding other volunteers who don't necessarily want to um, stand up in front of kids and teach them but they want to produce the material so it's a perfect storm of schools back office volunteers and teachers like me so I ran um, up until the end of last year a code club in Woodhouse's school I'm starting it again in December I'd like to think, well, I know it was very successful. All the kids reached their certificate level two. They thoroughly enjoyed it. I had 13 of them, eight girls and five boys. Fantastically rewarding. Code Club, when I joined, had about 500 schools. This was uh, at the beginning of this year. There are hundreds more already. So that's Code Club. STEMnet is my STEMnet ambassador badge. So STEMnet is more than just IT. It's more than just programming. Science, technology, engineering, and maths. So the hard sciences. STEMnet is a nationwide, just like Code Club, a nationwide initiative to engage with schools, with teachers, with pupils, with colleges, with other educational organizations to help them in lots of different areas. So bringing industry to schools and bringing schools to industry. I'll give you an example. So a couple of months ago, I went to Reddish Vale College, spent half a day there and gave um, different lessons to different groups of fifth formers on programming, on hardware hacking, on sensors, on data sensors, on solving maths puzzles with code. I spoke to uh, a sixth form at Zverium a couple of weeks ago on the Raspberry Pi. How to get involved with the Raspberry Pi, how to install things on it, how to start programming in Python. All these sorts of things and there are Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ambassadors, far clever, cleverer than I, in all these different <coughs> subjects, in physics, chemistry, biology, maths, that do this on a voluntary basis. Something closer to home that started out at MADLAB, MADLAB. is Manchester Coda Dojo. 
So Coda Dojo is a worldwide organization, loosely coupled, small pieces loosely joined, of regular events. Our Manchester Coda Dojo happens once a month. We hold it now at the Sharp Factory on Oldham Road. Fantastic place. Amazingly friendly. So this was a couple of weeks ago. It's for four hours on a Sunday. And we have kids from 6 to 18. We have different faculties, different areas. We have a Minecraft table. Minecraft, anybody? Heard of it? Don't understand it. But you can play it, but you can also program in it. It's a really great way of introducing programming. Yeah, all right, Freddie, instead of building that giant tower block by block, I'll show you how to write some code to do it for you instead. Wow! Amazing! How do I do that? Oh, maybe I could take that code and change it to do something else. Yes. We have Python programming groups. We have Scratch. We have hardware hacking with the Raspberry Pi. We have all sorts of things. We have fish and chips as well, which is very important. And of course, where would we be without Young Rewired State? So Young Rewired State is an incredible organization, nationwide again, and primarily, although not exclusively, is an annual event. Happens in August, week long. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then Saturday and Sunday, so Monday to Friday. Kids from all around the country gather in centers around the country, their nearest center. They go there, find like-minded kids, they build projects together based upon open data. We tell them about what open data is. We point them at open data, police data, schools, crime stats, map data. And they think of problems and then build solutions for those problems. They build amazing apps together in code using open data. Some kids have never programmed before, other kids are veterans. They help each other out. Not only do they learn coding and about open data, they learn to work together. They learn presentation skills. They learn collaboration. A lot of businesses could learn from these kids. And at the end of the five days, they go from the centers, and we all converge, all 800, 900 this year of us, in a central location. This year was a custard factory in Birmingham, for a big show and tell, prizes. An amazing experience. And the kids come again and again. We had one, in fact, let me go back. The one on the keyboard there, behind the guy with the glasses. He is a veteran. He's eight now. He knows Python, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, and he helps other kids. So you can get involved. So if you don't mind, I'll just summarize. The future is data-driven. It's important to teach our kids to code. You can get involved. Help shape our computational future. Thanks, DJ.